The Narmada, also called the Rua and previously also known as Nirbuddha, is a river in central India after the Godavari, and the Krishna. It is also known as, "...lifeline of Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh", for its huge contribution to the state of Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh in many ways. Narmada rises from Amarkantak Plateau near Anapur district. It forms the traditional boundary between North India and South India and flows westwards over a length of 1,312 kilometres before draining through the Gulf of Kambat into the Arabian Sea, 30 kilometres west of Baruch city of Gujarat. It is one of only three major rivers in peninsular India that run from east to west longest west flowing river, along with the Tapti River and the Mahi River. It is one of the rivers in India that flows in a rift valley, flowing west between the Satpura and Vindhya ranges. The other rivers which flow through rift valley include Damodar River in Chota Nagpur Plateau and Tapti. The Tapti River and Mahi River also flow through rift valleys, but between different ranges. It flows through the states of Madhya Pradesh 1077 kilometers 669.2 miles and Maharashtra 74 kilometers 46.0 miles 39 kilometers 24.2 miles actually along the border between Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra 39 kilometers 24.2 miles and then the border between Maharashtra and Gujarat 74 kilometers 46.0 miles and in Gujarat 161 kilometers 100.0 miles the Periplus Maris Erythrae c. 80 AD calls it the Namadus, and the British Raj called it the Nirbuddha or Narbada. Narmada is a Sanskrit word meaning, the giver of pleasure. <inaudible> <inaudible> River regime The source of the Narmada is a small reservoir, known as the Narmada Kund, located at Amarkantak on the Amarkantak Plateau in the Anapur district, Shadal zone of eastern Madhya Pradesh. The river descends from Sanmud, then falls over a cliff as Kapildhara waterfall and meanders in the hills, flowing through a tortuous course crossing the rocks and islands up to the ruined palace of Ramnagar. Between Ramnagar and Mandala, 25 kilometers (15.5 miles) further southeast, the course is comparatively straight with deep water devoid of rocky obstacles. The Bangar joins from the left. The river then runs northwest in a narrow loop towards Jubalpur. Close to this city, after a fall of some 9 meters (29.5 feet), called the Duandara, the fall of mist, it flows for 3 kilometers (1.9 miles) in a deep narrow channel through the magnesium limestone and basalt rocks called the marble rocks. From a width of about 90 meters (295.3 feet) above, it is compressed in this channel of 18 meters (59.1 feet) only. Beyond this point up to its meeting the Arabian Sea, the Narmada enters three narrow valleys between the Vindhya Scarps in the north and the Satpura Range in the south. The southern extension of the valley is wider at most places. These three valley sections are separated by the closely approaching line of the Scarps and the Satpura Hills. Emerging from the marble rocks the river enters its first fertile basin, which extends about 320 kilometers (198.8 miles) with an average width of 35 kilometers (21.7 miles) in the south. In the north, the valley is limited to the Barna Bareilly plain terminating at Barkara Hills opposite Hoshangabad. However, the hills again recede in the Candid Plains. The banks are about 12 meters (39.4 feet) high. It is in the first valley of the Narmada that many of its important tributaries from the south join it and bring the waters of the northern slopes of the Satpura Hills. Among them are, the Sher, the Shakar, the Dudi, the Tawa biggest tributary, and the Ganjal. The Hiran, the Barna, the Koral, the Karam and the Lohar are the important tributaries joining from the north. Below Handia and Nemawar to Hiran Fall the, Deer's Leap, the river is approached by hills from both sides. In this stretch the character of the river is varied. The Omkareshwar island, sacred to the Lord Shiva, is the most important river island in Madhya Pradesh. At first, the descent is rapid and the stream, quickening in pace, rushes over a barrier of rocks. The Sikta and the Kaveri join it below the Khandwa plain. At two points, at Mandar, about 40 km miles below Nemawar, and Dadre, 40 km miles further down near Punasa, the river falls over a height of about 12 meters 39.4 feet. 
A few kilometers further down near Bareilly and the crossing ghat of the Agra to Mumbai Road, National Highway 3, the Narmada enters the Manlishwar Plain, the second basin about 180 kilometers (111.8 miles) long and 65 kilometers (40.4 miles) wide in the south. The northern strip of the basin is only 25 kilometers (15.5 miles). The second valley section is broken only by Saheshwar Dara Fall. The early course of about 125 kilometers (77.7 miles) up to Markari Falls is met with a succession of cataracts and rapids from the elevated table land of Malwa to the low level of Gujarat Plain. Towards the west of this basin, the hills draw very close but soon dwindle down. Below Makrai, the river flows between Vadodara district and Narmada district and then meanders through the rich plain of Baruch district of Gujarat state. The banks are high between the layers of old alluvial deposits, hardened mud, gravels of nodular limestone and sand. The width of the river spans from about 1.5 km .9 miles at Makrai to 3 km .9 miles near Baruch and to an estuary of 21 km miles at the Gulf of Cambay. An old channel of the river, 1 km .6 miles to 2 km .2 miles south from the present one, is very clear below Baruch. The Karanjan and the Orzing are the most important tributaries in the original course. The former joins at Rund and the latter at Vyas in Vadodara district of Gujarat, opposite each other and form a Triveni confluence of three rivers on the Narmada. The Amaravati and the Bukhi are other tributaries of significance. Opposite the mouth of the Bukhi is a large drift called Alia Bet or Kaderia Bet. The tidal rise is felt up to 32 km .9 miles above Baruch, where the neap tides rise to about a meter and spring tide 3.5 meters .5 feet. The river is navigable for vessels of the burthen of 95 tons .e., 380 Bombay candies up to Baruch and for vessels up to 35 tons 140 Bombay candies up to Shamlapitha or Gandia. The small vessels 10 tons voyage up to Tilakawada in Gujarat. There are sand bases and shoals at Mouth and at Baruch. The nearby island of Kabirvad, in the Narmada River, features a gigantic banyan tree, which covers 10,000 square meters acres. It's also called Mother of Madhya Pradesh citizens. <laughs> Narmada Basin The Narmada Basin, hemmed between Vindhya and Satpura Ranges, extends over an area of 98,796 square kilometers (38,145.3 square miles) and lies between east longitude 72 degrees 32 feet to 81 degrees 45 feet and north latitudes 21 degrees 20 feet to 23 degrees 45 feet, lying on the northern extremity of the Deccan Plateau. The basin covers large areas in the states of Madhya Pradesh 81%, Gujarat 12%, and a comparatively smaller area 4% in Maharashtra, 2% in Chhattisgarh and 1% in Andhra Pradesh. In the river course of 1312 kilometers, 815.2 miles, explained above, there are 41 tributaries, out of which 22 are from the Satpura range and the rest on the right bank are from the Vindhya range. Dupgar 1350 meters near Pichmari is the highest point of the Narmada basin. The basin has 5 well-defined physiographic regions. They are sad face 1 the upper hilly areas covering the districts of Shadal, Mandala, Durg, Balaghat and Sioni 2 the upper plains covering the districts of Jebalpur, Narsingpur, Sagar, Damo, Chindwara, Hosangabad, Batul, Raisin and Sihor 3 the middle plains covering the districts of Khandwa, part of Kargon, Diwas, Indore and Dar 4 the lower hilly areas covering part of the West Namar, Jabua, Dulia, Narmada and parts of Vadodara, and 5 the lower plains covering mainly the districts of Narmada, Baruch, and parts of Vadodara. The hill regions are well forested. The upper, middle and lower plains are broad and fertile areas, well suited for cultivation. The Narmada basin mainly consists of black soils. 
The coastal plains in Gujarat are composed of alluvial clays with a layer of black soils on the surface. The valley experiences extremes of hydrometeorological and climatic conditions, with the upper catchment having an annual precipitation in the range of 1,000 mm to 1,850 mm, and with half or even less than half in its lower regions 650 mm 2.1 feet minus 750 mm 2.5 feet the diversity of vegetation from lush green in the upper region to dry deciduous teak forest vegetation in the lower region is testimony to this feature the irrigation commission 1972 identified the narmada basin in madhya pradesh as drought affected and a large part of north gujarat saurashtra and kutch as semi arid or arid scarcity regions on account of extreme unreliability of rainfall rendering them chronically drought prone and subject to serious drinking water problems. Geology The Narmada Valley is a graben, a layered block of the Earth's crust that dropped down relative to the blocks on either side due to ancient spreading of the Earth's crust. Two normal faults, known as the Narmada North Fault and Narmada South Fault, parallel to the river's course, and mark the boundary between the Narmada Block and the Vindhya and Satpura Blocks or Horsts which rose relative to the Narmada Graben. The Narmada's watershed includes the northern slopes of the Satpuras, and the steep southern slope of the Vindhyas, but not the Vindhyan Tableland, the streams from which flow into the Ganges and Yamuna. The Narmada Valley is considered extremely important for paleontological studies in India. Several dinosaur fossils have been found in the area including Titanosaurus indicus found in 1877 by Richard Lidecker and the recently discovered Rajasaurus narmadensis. <laughs> <laughs> Significance in Hinduism To Hindus the Narmada is one of the seven holy rivers of India, the other six being Ganges, Yamuna, Godavari, Saraswati, Sindhu, and Kaveri. It is believed that a dip in any of these seven rivers washes one's sins away. According to a legend, the river Ganges, polluted by millions of people bathing in it, assumes the form of a black cow and comes to the Narmada to bathe and cleanse itself in its holy waters. Legends also claim that the Narmada river is younger than the river Ganges and daughter of her. The river was mentioned by Ptolemy in the 2nd century AD as Namade and by the author of the Periplus. The Ramayana, the Mahabharat, and the Puranas refer to it frequently. The Rua Khanda Vayu Purana and the Rua Khanda of Skanda Purana are entirely devoted to the story of the birth and the importance of the river, and hence Narmada is also called the Rua. There are many fables about the origin of the Narmada. According to one of them, once Lord Shiva, the destroyer of the universe, meditated so hard that he started perspiring. Shiva's sweat accumulated in a tank and started flowing in the form of a river, the Narmada. Another legend has it that two teardrops that fell from the eyes of Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, yielded two rivers, the Narmada and the Brahmaputra. Legends also say that for Lord Shiva, the Hindu god, the river is especially sacred on account of its origin, and it is often called Shankari, i.e., daughter of Shankar Lord Shiva and goddess Ganga. All the pebbles rolling on its bed are said to take the shape of his emblem with the saying, Narmada K. Kankar Ute Sankar. A popular saying in the Hindi belt of India, which means that pebble stones of Narmada get a personified form of Shiva. These lingam-shaped stones quartz, called banalinga also called banashivalingas are much sought after for daily worship by the Hindus. The Brihadiswara temple in Thanjavur, Tamil Nadu, constructed by Rajaraja Chola, has one of the biggest banalingas. Adi Shankara met his guru Govinda Bhagavadpada on the banks of the river Narmada. Narmada is also said to have been in love with the Sanbhadra, another river flowing on the Chota Nagpur Plateau. According to the Puranas, the Narmada is also called the Rua, from its leaping motion from the root rev through its rocky bed. Important religious places and ghats along the course of the river, starting from its origin at Narmadakand at Amarkantak Hill, are a the Amarkantak in Sanskrit, Nek of Shiva or Tirtharaj the king of pilgrimages, b Omkareshwar, Maheshwar, and Mahadeo temples, Nemawar Siddhishwar Mandir in the middle reach of the river, all named after Shiva, c Chausith Yogini 64 Yoginis temple, d Shobhas Avatar temple, e and Brigu Rishi temple in Baruch. The Narmada River is also worshipped as mother goddess by Narmadiya Brahmins. 
The importance of the Narmada River is sacred as testified by the fact that the pilgrims perform a holy pilgrimage of a parikrama or circumambulation of the river. The Narmada Parikrama, as it is called, is considered to be a meritorious act that a pilgrim can undertake. Many sadhus and pilgrims walk on foot from the Arabian Sea at Baruch in Gujarat, along the river, to the source in Makal Mountains Hills in Madhya Pradesh and back along the opposite bank of the river. It is a 2,600-kilometre walk. The spiritual journey is usually taken for three years, three months and thirteen days and the pilgrims are stipulated not to cross the river at any point of time. Important towns of interest in the valley are Jubalpur, Barwani, Hoshangabad, Harda, Narmada Nagar, Omkareshwar, Diwas, Nemavar, Kiti, Pipri, Mandala and Maheshwar in Madhya Pradesh, and Rajpipla and Baruch in Gujarat. Some places of historical interest are Yoga Ka Kia, Chhatri of Baji Rao Peshwa and Bimbeka, and among the falls are the Dugdara, Dardi Falls, Baraghat, Duandara, Kapiladhara and Sahastradhara. <laughs> Facts of the valley In Indian history, Kannada emperor from Chalukya dynasty Palakeshin II is said to have defeated Emperor Harshavardhana of Kannauj on the banks of Narmada. The valley is famous for the gorgeous Maheshwari saris, which are handwoven, comfortable in warm and cold weather, dressy and yet light. These saris have a dedicated, select following among Indian women. <laughs> Forests and sanctuaries Teak and India's best hardwood forests are found in the Narmada River basin and they are much older than the ones in the Himalayas. The lower Narmada River valley and the surrounding uplands, covering an area of 169,900 square kilometers, 65,598.8 square miles, consists of dry deciduous forests. The ecoregion lies between moister forests to the northeast, southeast, and southwest, which receive greater rainfall from the southeast monsoon, and the drier forests and scrublands of the Deccan to the south and Malwa and Gujarat to the west and northwest. The natural vegetation of the region is a three-tiered forest. Tectana grandis is the dominant canopy tree, in association with Diaspyras melanoxylon, Deora, Anogysis latifolia, Lagerstremia parviflora, Terminalia tomentosa, Lania coromandelica, Hardwickia binata, and Boswellia serrata. Riparian areas along the region's rivers and streams, which receive year round water, are home to moist evergreen forests, whose dominant tree species are Terminalia arjuna, Syzygium cumini, Syzygium hainanum, Salix tetrasperma, Hominoia riparia, and Vitex nagundo. The ecoregion is home to 76 species of mammals and to 276 bird species, none of which are endemic. About 30% of the ecoregion is covered in relatively intact vegetation. The ecoregion includes some large blocks of habitat in the Vindhya and Satpura ranges. About 5% of the ecoregion lies within protected areas, including Bandhavgarh, Panna, and Sanjay National Parks. Some of the important national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in the valley are the following: Kanna National Park, located in the upper reaches of Narmada, about 18 kilometers (11.2 miles) from Mandala, boasts of several wild animals, including the tiger. Two tributaries of Narmada, namely, Halan and Banjar, flow through this park. It is one of the best national parks of Asia, which has been described vividly by Rudyard Kipling in his famous creation The Jungle Book. Satpura National Park, set up in 1981, is located in Hoshangabad district of Madhya Pradesh. Its name is derived from Satpura Hill Ranges Mahadeo Hills and covers an area of 524 square kilometers 202.3 square miles and along with the adjoining Bori and Panchmari sanctuaries provides 1427 square kilometers 551.0 square miles of unique central Indian highland ecosystem Satpura National Park being part of a unique ecosystem is very rich in biodiversity the fauna comprises tiger, leopard, sambar, chital, bedki, nilgai, four-horned antelope, chinkara, gaur, wild boar, wild dog, sloth bear, black buck, fox, porcupine, flying squirrel, mouse deer, Indian giant squirrel. There are a variety of birds. Hornbill and peafowl are the common birds. 
The flora of the national park consists of mainly sal, teak, tondu, aonla, mahua, bayel, bamboo, and a variety of grasses and medicinal plants. Forest areas outside protected areas are also quite rich in floral and faunal diversity. Mandala Plant Fossils National Park, Dindori National Fossils Park Guffuya is situated in Dindori district of Madhya Pradesh in India. This national park has plants in fossil form that existed in India anywhere between 40 million and 150 million years ago spread over seven villages of Mandala district Gugua, Umaria, Diorakard, Barbaspur, Chanti Hills, Chargaon and Diori Kohani. The Mandala Plant Fossils National Park is an area that spreads over 274,100 square meters, 2,950,387.8 square feet. Such fossils are found in 3 other villages of the district also, but they lie outside the national park. One theory is that the area in which the fossils are located, i.e., the Narmada Valley near Mandala, was actually a deep inundation of the sea into peninsular India till the post-Cambrian tertiary age, about 40 million years ago. This means that Narmada was a very short river which terminated in the inland sea above Mandala, and that the recession of the sea caused geological disturbances, which created the present rift valley through which the Narmada River and Tapti River flow in their present journey to the Arabian Sea. All this, however, is speculation and conjecture because it is only recently that an interest has developed in the fossils of Mandala and detailed scientific studies are still wanting. The Pichmari Biosphere Reserve covers part of three civil districts viz. Hoshangabad, Batul and Chindwara of Madhya Pradesh. The total area is 4,926.28 square kilometers 1,902.0 square miles. It envelops three wildlife conservation units viz. Bori Sanctuary 518.00 square kilometers, Satpura National Park 524.37 square kilometers, 202.5 square miles, and Pichmari Sanctuary 461.37 square kilometers, 178.1 square miles. Satpura National Park comprises the core zone and the remaining area of 4501.91 square kilometers, 1738.2 square miles. Surrounding the core zone serves as buffer zone. The area comprises 511 villages. The area exhibits variety of geological rock and soil formations. There is a wide spectrum of floral and faunal features that occupy the Satpura conservation area. It is one of the oldest forest reserves, which has an established tradition of scientific management of forests. It constitutes a large contiguous forest block that harbors a community of plant and animal species typical of the Central Highland region. Apart from the above national parks, there are also a number of natural preserves such as the Amarkantok, the Bog Caves, and the Betagat. In compliance of the Environmental Action Plan for the Narmadasagar and Omkaraswar HEPs, as per the recommendations of the Wildlife Institute of India three new protected areas may be created, which are, a, the Narmada National Park 496.70 square kilometers, b, the Sarmanya Sanctuary 126.67 square kilometers, and c, Omkareshwar Sanctuary 119.96 square kilometers comprising a total area of 788.57 7 square kilometers, Shulpanishwar Sanctuary in Gujarat, near the Sardar Sarovar Dam site, previously called the Dunkel Sloth Bear Sanctuary Old Sanctuary has been expanded four times now covers an area of about 607 square kilometers 234.4 square miles, comprises a major watershed feeding the Sardar Sarovar and Karjan Reservoir on the Karjan River, a tributary of Narmada in Gujarat. It is the habitat of mammals and a variety of birds, including eagles and hawks. <laughs> Anthropological and archaeological sites The Bimbetka rock shelters are located in a dike of the Narmada Valley at about 45 km miles southeast of Bhopal between Bhopal and Hoshangabad Highway. The walls of these caves contain prehistoric paintings. The development of the Narmada River has led to the inundation of some archaeological and architectural sites. The Department of Archaeology, Museums and Archives, Government of Madhya Pradesh, undertook rescue excavations in response, and transplanted a number of temples. An attempt to comprehensively list and publish lost sites has been undertaken by Jürgen Nuss.
Topic: <laughs> Narmada River Development (NRD). The Narmada River has a huge water resources potential, as much as 33,210,000 acre-feet of average annual flow more than 90% of this flow occurring during the monsoon months of June to September, which according to estimates is greater than the combined annual flows of the Ravi, Bees and the Sutlej rivers, which feed the Indus Basin. The 75% dependable flow is 28 million acre-feet Till the beginning of planned development in the country was started in 1946, this huge potential went almost a begging without any effective utilization thus denying much needed succor to the drought-stricken people of the valley, both in Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. Since then plans have been evolved, debated, finally legally examined and adjudicated by a tribunal, and agitated by NGOs. The Supreme Court has finally intervened to ensure that the implementation of the projects are not halted. Early background and dispute Investigations for harnessing the Narmada waters started around the time of independence, when Central Waterways, Irrigation and Navigation Commission identified several storage schemes and in 1948 the Kosla Committee prioritized the proposals and named Tawa, Bargi, Punasa and Baruch projects the last three on the main stem of the river for preparation of reports. The reports were ready by 1963. A parallel study of hydropower potential identified 16 sites with a potential of 1,300 megawatts. While the project in Gujarat, the Baruch Weir project for which Jawaharlal Nehru laid the foundation stone in 1961 went through a series of modifications and improvements with a reformed scheme at Navagam village to extend benefits up to the Ran of Kutch, following the bifurcation of the erstwhile Bombay state into Maharashtra and Gujarat states and Gujarat's intent to raise the height of the dam at Navagam to maximize storage benefits at the cost of submergence of potential hydropower sites in Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh, there was a dispute between the states. It resulted in an impasse in the implementation of the agreed projects at Navagam in Gujarat, Punasa in Madhya Pradesh and Bhargi Dam in Madhya Pradesh and power benefit sharing among the states, with Madhya Pradesh refusing to ratify the agreements. To break the logjam, a high-level committee was appointed by the Government of India in September 1964. In 1965, the committee prepared a master plan for the basin, which involved construction of 12 major projects in MP and the Navagam Dam in Gujarat. It provided priority to irrigation over power, irrigation of 2,630 square kilometers (1,020 square miles) in MP, 400 square kilometers (150 square miles) in Maharashtra, 460 square kilometers (180 square miles) in Gujarat, and 4,000 square kilometers (1,500 square miles) in Rajasthan. The storages it recommended in MP involved Bargi, Tawa and Narmadasagar Punasa, while its proposed Navagam High Dam would submerge the Hydalpower project sites of Jalasindi in Maharashtra and Haranfal MP, but without any more submergence than would be caused by the three dams if separately constructed. Gujarat endorsed the proposal, but Maharashtra was not willing to go by it. After intense parleys failed to resolve the problem, the GOI decided to set up the Narmada Water Disputes Tribunal in 1969 under the Interstate River Water Disputes Act 1956 to adjudicate on the dispute relating to sharing of water of the interstate Narmada and its valley. Tribunal Award – After ten years of deliberations, the Narmada Water Disputes Tribunal gave its award in December 1979. The NWDT, considering the development of the water resources of the basin as a whole, gave its award, allocating share of water and hydro power of the Sardar Sarovar project. The tribunal's final order determined the utilizable quantum of Narmada waters to be 27 million acre-feet at 75% dependability and allocated it to the four states, as in table below, including share of power benefits. It also stipulated the share of water when utilizable flow was in excess of 28 million acre-feet The Navagam Dam height was fixed at full reservoir level 460 feet meters with a maximum water level of L feet. The full supply level of the Navagam Canal was fixed at 300 feet 91 meters. 
The cost-sharing formula among the states and the consequent requirement of release of regulated releases from the Narmada Sagar Dam by MP was also spelt out. The resettlement and rehabilitation package was also clearly specified with all costs to be borne by Gujarat for all resettlement and rehabilitation work of people affected in the three states and also for relocating any ancient or historic monuments, places of worship or idols likely to suffer submergence. The uniqueness of this award is that a non-riparian state, Rajasthan, has been allocated a share of Narmada waters, for meeting the water requirements of the drought-prone districts of Barmer and Jalore, which have no other source of dependable water. The work on the project did not start soon since extensive studies were undertaken for project designing and with World Bank getting involved with funding studies and project costs loan agreement with GOI of $450 million was signed in May 1985. The Resettlement and Rehabilitation R &R package was substantially revised, over and above what was set in the NWDT, and environmental studies had to be undertaken, but the environmental and forest clearances for the projects from the newly formed Ministry of Environment Environment and Forests involved extensive interministerial and interdepartmental discussions within the central GOVT and with state governments for a substantial period and it was only in June 1987, almost eight years after the NWDT award was given in December 1979 that the MO and F gave a conditional approval to the Sardar Sarovar and Narmada Sagar projects. The forest clearance was given in September 1987 for Sardar Sarovar only. The clearance also required the work to be done peri passu with the construction of the dams and the filling of the reservoir. In the meantime, the Narmada Control Authority (NCA), an interstate administrative authority, and the Sardar Sarovar Construction Advisory Committee (SSCAC) were set up in 1980 by the GOVT of India in compliance of the NWDT award. The former organization was set up in December 1980 as body corporate with representatives from the four party states and India as a machinery to implement the decisions and directions of the NWDT and the later organization was set up in Sept 1980 as a statutory body to ensure efficient, economical and timely execution of the Unit I dam and, appurtenant works and Unit III hydropower works of the Sardar Sarovar Project SSP. A review committee consisting of the Union Minister for Irrigation now substituted by Union Minister for Water Resources as its chairperson and the Chief Ministers of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Rajasthan as its members is also in position to review the decisions of the NCA and the SSCAC, as required. For monitoring and implementation of various environmental activities effectively, independent machinery of the Environment Sub-Group is functioning since November 1987 under NCA. Similarly, for monitoring the progress of the resettlement and rehabilitation of project-affected people, R&R subgroup is also functioning under the NCA. At the state level, Sardar Sarovar Narmada Nigam Limited SSNL in Gujarat has the mandate to implement and manage the Sardar Sarovar multipurpose project. In Madhya Pradesh, the Narmada Valley Development Authority NVDA is vested the responsibility for implementation of the projects. The overall plan for development ultimately conceived involves 30 major dams including Sardar Sarovar 21 irrigation, 5 hydropower, and 4 multipurpose, some 135 medium dams, and over 3 minor dams in MP along the main stem of the river and its 41 tributaries to utilize its allocated share of 18,250,000 acre-feet before 2025 within 45 years of the NWDT award. In addition to power generation and irrigation within the basin, water was allocated for domestic and industrial water uses and for multipurpose transbasin diversions to Sun River and Tuns River basins in eastern MP, drought-prone areas of Saurashtra, Kutch, northern mainland in Gujarat, and southern Rajasthan. Irrigation benefits to the extent of about 40,000 square kilometers, 15,000 square miles to 50,000 square kilometers, 19,000 square miles of drought prone and scarcity areas and power generation of 2,600 megawatts were also envisaged. Thus, the Narmada River development is envisaged as a multi-state program for development of hydropower and irrigation dams and their associated irrigation networks. In 1961, the original project envisaged irrigation of almost 2 million acres 8,100 square kilometers in West India at a cost of $100 million. By 2011, it had escalated to $3 billion. 
Even though the tribunal award resolved the initial issue of water sharing, but the height of dam, benefit sharing and the mode of settlement of affected people caused serious difficulties in implementation, particularly of the Sardar Sarovar Dam the terminal dam on the river. Affected people agitated under the banner of the dedicated NGO, the Narmada Bachao Andolan NBA. The NBA followed up by public interest litigation pill in the Supreme Court of India. The NBA questioned the benefits claimed from the major projects, challenged the resettlement and rehabilitation packages for project affected people of the reservoir submergence and canal affected zones and its implementation. It also rejected the environmental impact assessments made and the remedial actions taken by the project authorities. The challenge created worldwide attention to the major development activity planned in the valley. It urged the World Bank to withdraw from the project and the intense worldwide pressure resulted in the bank mounting an independent review mission IRM called the Morse Mission to review the SSP. However, the IRM's report was neither accepted by the Government of India or the World Bank. Finally Government of India decided to terminate further drawing from a remaining $180 million World Bank credit from the bank with the firm resolution that the project would be completed within the national resources. The Supreme Court has also deliberated on this issue for several years but finally upheld the tribunal award and allowed the construction to proceed, subject to conditions. The court introduced a mechanism to monitor the progress of resettlement Parai Pasu with the raising of the height of the dam through Grievance Redressal Authorities GRA in each of the party states. The court's decision referred in this document, given in the year 2000, after seven years of deliberations, has paved the way for completing the project to attain full envisaged benefits. The Supreme Court judgment was by two of a three-judge panel. The third judge, S. P. Barucha, dissented with the two other judges' verdict. Justice Barucha stated, Considering the magnitude of rehabilitation, involving a large percentage of tribals, loss of extensive forest area rich in biological diversity, enormous environmental cost of the project and considering the fact that the basic data on vital aspects are still not available there could be but one conclusion, that the projects are not ready for approval. The construction of the two multipurpose major projects, the Sardar Sarvor in Gujarat and Indira Sagar in Madhya Pradesh, with the two interdependent to attain full envisaged benefits, is in progress and substantial partial benefits have already been achieved. Hence, details of these two projects are elaborated below. Topic Sardar Sarovar Dam The dam has attained a height of L.121.92 m, the crest level of the spillway. The gates are yet to be erected to attain the FRL of L138.68 meters for which clearance is required from the Supreme Court after the Grievance Redressal Committee submits its report on completion of R&R &R up to that elevation. Top level of dam to be attained is L146.50 meters. Subsequent to the tribunal award and approval to the project in 1987 by the Ministry of Water Resources with due clearances from the Ministry, implementation of the Sardar Sarovar Project SSP was taken up as the terminal project on the main stem of the Narmada, in Gujarat, to use the share of allocated water to Gujarat and Rajasthan. The concrete gravity dam of 1,210 meters (3,970 feet) length and 163 meters (535 feet) height above foundation with storage capacity of 7,700,000 acre feet (9.5 cubic kilometers) and reservoir length of 214 kilometers (133 miles) extending into Gujarat, Maharashtra, and Madhya Pradesh is designed to provide an annual irrigation of 18,000 square kilometers (6,900). Square miles in Gujarat, covering 3,360 villages of 62 talukas in 14 districts, 4,260 square kilometers (1,640 square miles) in Rajasthan, and hydel power generation of 1,450 megawatts. As a result of construction of the dam, over 48,269 families, 7,000 families were assessed in 1979 by the tribunal will be affected as per the latest figures of NCA in the three states spread over 244 villages, four fully and 240 partially, 39,369 in MP in 192 villages, 4,163 in Maharashtra in 33 villages and 4,737 in 
Gujarat in 19 villages, the total area affected being 375.33 square kilometers, 144.92 square miles. The submergence area is broadly divided into two areas. First is fully tribal, which covers the initial reach of about 100 or so villages, which are almost 100% tribal and hilly. They include all the 33 villages of Maharashtra in Nidarbar district, all 19 of Gujarat and many of the Madhya Pradesh. The second part of the submergence area is the mixed population area on the Nemad Plains, with a very well-developed economy that is well connected to the mainstream. Considered as the largest water resources project of India in terms of benefits, some of the special features of the project are the following, the spillway discharging capacity, at 3,070,000 cu foot per second 87,000 cubic meters per second, is the third highest in the world with 1,133 cubic meters per second 40,000 feet cubed, s capacity at the head regulator and 532 kilometers 331 miles length 458 kilometers 285 miles in Gujarat and 74 kilometers 46 miles in Rajasthan with 75000 kilometers 47000 miles length of distribution system including field channel the Narmada main canal is the largest irrigation canal in the world the project aims at supplying 3,571,000 cubic meters per day of drinking water, 2,900,000 cubic meters per day for domestic consumption, and 671,000 cubic meters per day for industrial consumption to 8,215 villages and 135 towns in Gujarat, which are suffering from acute shortage of water. Also, the project aims to provide drinking water facilities to a population of about 1,371,000 in 1107 villages and two towns in Jalore district and Barmer district of Rajasthan. It has the lowest ratio of submergence to area irrigated, 1.65% of CCA against an average of 4 to 5% of other major irrigation projects. All six units of River Bed Power House RBPH have been commissioned successfully by June 2006 and are in operation. All five units of Canal Head Power House CHPH have been commissioned successfully by late December 2004 and are in operation. The main irrigation canal has been substantially constructed for a length of 357 kilometers, 222 miles. Water has been let into the canal for partial irrigation and water supply needs. Further construction is in progress. Topic Indirasagar Dam the Indira Sagar project ISP at Punasa is one of the 30 major projects proposed in the Narmada basin with the largest storage capacity in the country. The project is located near Punasa village, in Khandwa district, Madhya Pradesh. This multipurpose river valley project envisages construction of a concrete gravity dam, 653 meters 2 feet long and 92 meters 302 feet high with gross storage capacity of the reservoir of 12.22 cubic kilometers 9,910,000 acre feet and live storage of 9.75 cubic kilometers 7,900,000 acre feet to provide an annual irrigation potential of 1,690 square kilometers and a generation of 1,000 MW of hydropower. The project also ensures supply of 60,000 acre-feet of drinking water to rural areas in Kandwa district. In accordance with NWDT award, an annual regulated flow of 8,120,000 acre-feet shall be released to the Sardar Sarovar project SSP, ex Maheshwar project. The operation of Indira Sagar project will be carried out in such a way as to facilitate the regulation of Sardar Sarovar. The dam and the powerhouse have been completed, but storage has been restricted up to L260 meters under orders of the High Court, Jubal Poor from R&R &R consideration. All the units of the powerhouse have been commissioned and generation of power from the eight units of 125 MW capacity, each commenced from January 2004. The irrigation component of the project is under a fairly advanced stage of implementation. Other completed and under construction projects existing irrigation projects in the Narmada are the 1 Matiari 1992, 2 Rani Avantabai Sagar 1988, 3 Barna 1978, 4 Tawa 1992-93, 5 Sukta 1984 all in Madhya Pradesh, and Karjan project in Gujarat. 
Projects under implementation are the 1 Bargi Diversion, 2 Kohler, 3 MAN, 4 Omkareshwar Multipurpose 520 megawatts, commissioned in November 2007 and 5 Maheshwar 400 megawatts. A large number of medium and small projects have been completed, and many more are under implementation, as conceived under the overall master plan. Navigation along the river The river is partially navigable in the estuary reach around Baruch but the river has never been a transport artery. The idea for inland navigation emanated with NWDT giving its award for the two main dams, the Sardar Sarovar in Gujarat 180 km 110 miles from the coast and the Narmada Sagar in Madhya Pradesh, the two dams separated by a river distance of about 900 km 560 miles, and the plans to build two other dams in between on the main stem of the river. A feasibility study has been carried out for navigating the Narmada from the sea up to Hoshangabad, a distance of 639 kilometers (397 miles), or even up to Jabalpur, a further distance of 309 kilometers (192 miles) upstream. The main challenge in these studies is the arrangements to be planned to negotiate the Maheswar, Indira Sagar, Omkaraswar, and Sardar Sarovar projects. As such, the navigation option is still open and probably can only be pursued after all the above dams are completed and other implications examined. As Varghese states, the notion of seeing barge trains plying the river up to Hoshangabad or Jubalpur is not far-fetched. They could become major inland ports. <laughs> Gallery Photos of some of the dams and other connected structures in the Narmada Basin. See also List of rivers of India Narmada Pushkaram Afros Ahmad Third Narmada Bridge Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Srivastava Pankaj 2007. Jungle Rehi Taki Narmada Bay, Hindi. Narmada Conservation Initiative, Indore. Weir, Sheila. The Gons of Central India, The Material Culture of the Gons of Chindwara District, Madhya Pradesh. London, British Museum, 1973. Geoffrey Waring Ma 1991. Narmada, The Life of a River. Marjorie Sykes. Yoginder K. Alla, Mahesh T. Padak, D. T. Book 1995. Narmada and Environment, An Assessment. Hara Non Publications. K. Sankaran Uni 1996. Ecology of River Narmada. APH Publishing. ISBN 978-81-7024-765-4. Singh Bal Hartosh 2013. Water Close Over Us, A Journey Along the Narmada. HarperCollins India. ISBN 9350297051